Today on America Right Now, we're going to continue our Who is Kamala Harris series. A growing number of Americans, Democrats and Republicans alike, actually, are concerned over the rise in crime in this country, according to Pew Research. This week, we're going to be shining a light on Vice President Kamala Harris's record when it comes to crime and law enforcement. Now, she says that she was a tough prosecutor. But has she stood up to the soft on crime policies of her party? For more on this, let's bring in the founder and president of Citizens Behind the Badge, Craig Floyd, also joining us, retired lieutenant for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department and founder of the Wounded Blue, Lieutenant Randy Sutton. Gentlemen, uh, thank you both for being here. Let's go back, if we can, to 2020 during the George Floyd riots. And let's take a listen to Kamala Harris. When you have many cities that have one third of their entire city budget focused on policing, we know that is not the smart way and the best way or the right way to achieve safety. If for too long, the status quo thinking has been, you get more safety by putting more cops on the street. Well, that's wrong. Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Sutton, I'm gonna go to you first on that. Uh, you know, she, she continues to say that she was tough on crime when she was a, a prosecutor in San Francisco, but she did seem to abandon those views as senator and later as vice president. Uh, talk to us, uh, respond to that, and how do you assess her record? Uh, her, re her record is dismal, and it, and it always has been. Um, you know, she has very, very little credibility. I watch her, and uh, and and you know it's 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 that it's that old expression. How do you tell when somebody's lying? Well, their mouth is moving. Um, her her stance about law enforcement has always been negative, against law enforcement, against holding people accountable. And uh, in fact, she was a, a part and parcel of the no bail, no bail movement, as well as being uh, part, part uh, responsible for literally bailing out. Uh, hundreds of, of of violent criminals. So when 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 she is uh, when she's talking about her past uh, mm -hmm. record, um, uh, it's it's it is actually dismal, and she has zero credibility with law enforcement. I can tell you that. Craig Lieutenant brought it up. Uh, Minnesota cities around the country were looted and burned in 2020. Uh, Harris raised money for the Minnesota Freedom Fund, a bail fund helping to free the rioters, uh, many of them violent criminals from jail, including George Howard, who fatally shot a man in August of 2021, and Sean Michael Tillman, convicted of first-degree murder in 2022. Uh, Craig, we have a crisis of DAs who refuse to prosecute criminals, many of them backed by George Soros. Has, ha has Harris ever recommended the firing or the removal of those district attorneys? I think we have a real problem with uh, Kamala Harris. I think the best place to go is go back to uh, 2004 in San Francisco when she was district attorney. She had a chance then to be tough on crime, especially tough on a cop killer. Uh, Isaac Espinoza was a San Francisco police officer shot and killed on April 10th, 2004. And even before he was buried uh, with people like Senator Dianne Feinstein, who's, who's no uh, conservative. She was calling for the death penalty for the killer of Isaac Espinoza. But even before he was buried, uh, Kamala Harris, as district attorney, said there would be no death penalty uh, in the case of her, his killer. Uh, and from that day forward, she lost all respect from the San Francisco Police Department, all the officers who served. And really, she disrespected all the law enforcement officers across this country. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, you know, uh, uh, Craig just brought up this uh, the situation where, you, you know, even the folks in the Democratic Party were saying, you, you got to give this cop killer the death penalty. You have to make him eligible for it. Um, and she ref and she refused. She's also done that with sanctuary cities. She said that sanctuary cities, uh, it, that's it, we need to detach our immigration policy from uh, from policing, which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, at least to me. We have a crisis of recruitment for in our, in our police departments all across the country. Um, if she is elected and Tim Walz are elected, what happens to the, to the functional effectiveness of many of those departments? Well, I'm, I've said this in the past, and I'll reiterate it, that um, the, the Harris and Walz ticket is quite literally the dream team 
for the criminal class. Um, they have uh, Tim Walsh has been an absolute failure when it comes down to uh, the accountability during the uh, during the, the riots. Uh, he personally refused to bring in the National Guard when the city was burning, and um, uh, and his and his his record has been. You probably if, if you can get a worse record than Kamala Harris, mm. it's probably Tim Walz when it comes down to criminal justice. Yeah. He's been an absolute failure, and and the, and the and the death toll during the riots, we had uh, three people dead, millions upon millions of dollars in damage. The city has never mm -hmm. come back. The police yeah. department is about half straight yeah. because uh, they can't keep up with recruiting and they can't keep up with. Uh, with retention because of the policies, and that could, of not, uh, and that could end up, uh, and that and, could end and, up being and, an issue, you know, on a nationwide on a nationwide basis. We're going to be talking about this issue more, and uh, we appreciate your uh, your your insights, gentlemen. Craig Floyd of Citizens Behind the Badge, Lieutenant Randy Sutton. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. For more on this, let's bring in my very special guest for the day, National Review reporter Caroline Downey. Caroline. Um, Let's talk about the law enforcement issue uh, and and what you see in her record, uh, because a right. lot of folks are accusing her of flip flopping on issues, saying she's one thing, but then actually in practice doing another. She, uh, where have you see where do you see that dr most mm -hmm. dramatically, perhaps in, in the law enforcement issue? On crime, she is a political chameleon, just like all the other issues. When she was San Francisco district attorney, she wrote in her book, Smart on Crime, that a strong police presence is actually a deterrent to crime and, and makes minority communities like Latinos feel safer. And then we know when she was running on the presidential stage years ago, she advocated for defunding the police. She framed it as reimagining policing, which basically meant draining the resources out of those departments, handicapping cops from actually doing their job. So, so she just, she changes positions when it's politically advantageous. And that's why, again, she's so inauthentic on this issue. Anyone who votes for this ticket needs to understand that they are cozy with anarchists. And, and we know this because of the 2020 riots when, again, she supported bailing out those rioters that were wreaking havoc across America. And then now her running mate, Tim Waltz, has a terrible record on his hands. He presided over that lawlessness. He delayed deploying the National Guard for mm -hmm. four days. I mean, just think about, just think about, like, w w the lasting damage of, of those, of that unrest. Well, it, it's what it says to the families of police officers and to police officers that your national political leadership is not going to be there. It's mm -hmm. not going to be there to support you. And uh, and that's devastating and we've seen we've seen the consequences of that.